Hey everybody, welcome back to another LEGO City Update. Jordan here. Today, we're going to be moving modular buildings around. When we originally built this LEGO City layout here, all the modular buildings were on the ground. And I was like, you know what, just get these things up off the ground. I can't stand looking at them on the ground. And we just sort of put them on the raised platform, put them along here, and just a random order. So today, we're going to try and get a more permanent layout for our modular buildings, just because they don't really look optimal right now. So we're going to be shuffling them around from the raised platform down to the ground level here and also to Pop Culture Street because there's a lot of space open for the taking here as well. In addition to that, we're probably going to be testing some new ballast train track layouts. I know I just finished the train track, but I want to convert to the L gauge standard. So we're probably going to be trying that out as well. And uh, we're also going to be building, I think, a couple more uh, cliff edge panels as well. So welcome back to another LEGO City update. Super excited to start shuffling some of these modular buildings around and just sort of get this city looking more permanent so we can move on to the next stage in the near future. First things first, what the heck is that doing on top of Assembly Square? The largest modular building that we have is the Dino's Exhibition. And when I mean largest, I don't mean piece count, but I mean base plate dimension. This thing is two and a half base plates large. It's massive. We sort of think that the Dino's Exhibition belongs right over here by the zoo on the pop culture table. Does a dinosaur museum make sense beside a zoo? I think it sort of does, doesn't it? Now, when placing modular buildings here on the pop culture street table, we have to keep in mind that you're going to be able to see the backside. So the backside has to look good, and I think the backside of this building actually does look pretty good. You see the color combination of the Dino's Exhibition? It actually looks very similar to the Pets slash Post Office, doesn't it? Those buildings might look good beside the Dino's Exhibition. So because of the color combinations, I think they look really good beside each other. Next up, we're going to move the townhouses just right here next to Sig Tower, which sort of makes sense because those are apartments, right? The Detective's Office slash Barbershop might look good up top here. You know what looked good beside Jose's Bakery? The Grand Hotel Alt Build, which is a flower shop. We've got the brigade right over there beside the Disney costume shop. We sort of wanted a little more central and we think it's out of place. So we're going to move that right over here beside the daily press and also the police station. Just think it makes a little bit more sense. We have to decide what we're going to do with our train station. Might have to make some sort of tunnel train station built into the cliff wall when that's built. That might look pretty neat. Or maybe have some sort of access through one of these cement walls that we build. I accidentally bumped into it and broke the roof. Oopsie daisy. So that needs to be repaired now. We think the assembly square belongs up top. So I think when we build the cliff right here and also the train sort of tunnel entrance, I think the cliff is going to sort of build up the side here and be pressed up against the side of a building. And we've started this with two corner buildings, the Grand Emporium and the Palace Cinema. But I think we're going to move those two buildings. We're going to give it a little bit of breathing room here, probably about a half base plate on top. And then we're going to start our building. So what I'm going to do is remove the Grand Emporium and the Palace Cinema and put the Assembly Square building right there, I think. So as you can see, everything has to change. And everything will change a million more times because there are so many combinations that these modular buildings could be put together. And even when our LIGO cities eventually consider to be quote unquote done, I'm sure they will change again. But now we've got the assembly square and then the bookshop alternate build there. Now we're thinking maybe the palace cinema would look good here. And then maybe after that, we'll just do what we did before and have like a half base plate road or something. Or a little cobblestone walkway, similar to what we're gonna do in front of these modulars. And then we'll have our Grand Emporium there. I'm not sure where my half base plate went, which is it's right beside you there, to your right, to your left hand side, sorry. Just so we can get the spacing correct. So maybe that'll look good. Now something we could do back here is actually pull these forward a little bit. You can see we got a half base plate. What we could do is pull these forward maybe hmm, six studs. That would leave us with 10 studs in front for our walkway. 
and six studs behind. And then what we could do is build facades back here to add some height and another dimension. Or we could add maybe more of our rock edges or something like that. When the time comes, we might do something like that. Inspired by a legendary Lego city builder known as Mr. Bookie Boo. Legendary facade builder, Lego city working in tight spaces. Absolutely incredible layout. Sorry, my dogs are going crazy there. But yeah, eventually we could do something pretty cool there. So technically we have two boutique hotel modular buildings. However, one has been converted into the rebrickable model known as the El Cubo Fine Art Cafe. And that's right up here. We think we need to separate these a bit because they look very similar to one another. So we're gonna move this modular building. It might look pretty cool right there beside the Grand Emporium. Now, we just realized that the detective's office has this nougat color right here. And that might look good beside the nougat color of Assembly Square. So I think we're gonna push everything over one base plate and put it right there. We're pretty happy with this layout here. I think all the buildings up top make sense. And then the positions of the buildings on the bottom here make sense as well. We move the Lego store over here. Uh, we put the diner up there. Eventually we're gonna bring the diner down here once we get our bowling alley because they really do look similar. So eventually it's gonna be like the diner here and the bowling alley down here on Pop Culture Street. We're gonna have to fix our park. You can see it looks like there's a giant windstorm or a giant walk through there or something and knocked all our trees down. We're gonna have to get that all figured out, but the park doesn't really make sense there for now. Eventually it's gonna get filled up with, you know, more modular buildings. And as you can see, we have a bunch of space open on the platform. Like it's crazy how much space we have open right now with this new layout. It's absolutely insane. So we don't know what to do until we get more modular buildings or more buildings to fill that area. Another thing that we need to come up with is how we're going to cover the 16 studs that we have available here on the platform. Like I was saying, we might divide the space evenly with the back or, you know, six studs back there, 10 studs up here. So we might do that. So we really got to think about that before we sort of move forward with planning that out. Also, we have 16 studs back here that we have to think about as well. How are we gonna fill in those spaces? We're out of half base plates. And as you can see, the rock edge that we wanna build sits on a half base plate. It's a half mills plate. And in order to build those, you need half base plates. This, this thing right here is our rock panel. I wanna build a bunch of these and just sort of lay them out there temporarily just to cover that up, just so we can start to visualize what it's gonna look like because we don't have the parts to build the big stone walls and the archways and the uh, tunnel entrances and stuff like that right now. So we have to order the parts to do that. But we gotta figure out how we're gonna cover this up in the meantime, and if we're gonna be cutting base plates in half because half base plates are really expensive, and I have a bunch of full base plates right down here. So a way that we could reduce expense is by cutting a bunch of these green base plates that I found at Walmart for five bucks. We could just cut them right in half. That's what I've done in the past, just cut them in half. And then when we do that, I have the half base plates for down here and also the half base plates for up top. Something we could do. Also, this platform you can see is the exact height of this MERP right here. So technically, if we wanted to extend our platform out a couple of studs, we could do that. Or we could even bring these MERPs forward because you can see there's five studs of playroom right there. We could bring this forward and we could extend our platform even larger might be a good way to utilize some of the space on the bottom and use it up top here. So we've got a lot to think about, but I think I like the position of our new modular buildings. Am I gonna start cutting base plates? I don't know. Oh my gosh, that's such a hard decision because once you do it, there's no going back really. I guess there is because then you could just take the two half base plates and mills them together and come up with a full base plate, technically speaking. But I do like the position of all of the modular buildings now. I think I'm happy with that need to decide what we're gonna do here for the platform cover up and also for the 16 studs of space available on top of the platform as well. Okay, I guess it's time for my train track ramble. So this is what we call the L gauge standard on a base plate. So this thing is the L gauge standard. Now, what it is, is this one ballast rail and it actually has a plate underneath that attaches it to the base plate. You see that? There's some tiles there for support 
There's some one by two plates to actually clip your train track into spot. You can see one came with my train track there. And then we have a row of one by gray plate on the side of it. And when you put this down on there, it clips it in spot and makes it very easy to remove. So this looks very similar to the train track that we're using in the Lego city right now, which is this one right here. Now the difference between these two is this one is actually one plate higher. You can see when I go to connect these here, they're not gonna connect because in fact, one is one plate higher. This one is the lower one. So what I did here is just took this ballast rail and stuck it right onto the base plate. So all of these studs are adapted, or all of these plates are adapted right to the base plate. There's not that. So this is what I wanna to convert to, but there's a problem. When you do this and you match it up with a Mills plate, you can see there's some massive height difference, right? So what do we wanna do? Maybe I should build the train track. Maybe I should build this style of train track onto a Mills plate, which is one brick and one plate higher off the ground. Now the issue with that is this thing is massive. Like it's super tall. When you line that up with a road, it is like a giant bump. The train track is way taller than the road. Whereas this one here that we're currently using in the Lego city is the exact height of the road. So this here can seamlessly be hidden into the road, similar to a trolley car rail that you would see in a city, right? So this can be hidden into a ballast road perfectly because this is at road height right here. So it looks really good when it's integrated into a road. Whereas this is way taller than the road, right? So yeah, like, I don't think I wanna use this even though that's probably correct. That would probably be the height that a train track would be at. This one would probably be all right. Like I'd be okay with switching to the L gauge standard potentially uh, because the, trains, the train track can be so easily removed and it would also tack down our corners because right now our corners are just sitting loose on base plates. So if we bring it up that extra plate, then I'm gonna be able to tack down my corners, uh, which uses a whole bunch of parts. I'll show you those instructions right now. Yeah, you can see the underlying pieces right there, whole bunch of tiles, whole bunch of one by one plate, one by one studs, and yeah, it's just so many parts that have to go into creating the L gauge standard for the curves. So what we could do is convert to this system, and then when these uh, meet up with a road, it's only one plate height difference. Whereas this is just massive. It's like a giant bump when you line that up with the road. So I don't think I wanna use this. I think I wanna use probably this right here. Now the issue is, is look at this. It's pretty low, right? Like this is pretty low to the ground. So what we'd have to do is probably put some plates on the side like that there. But then even that, when you compare that to a, a sidewalk, it's still gonna be pretty darn low, right? So what we could do too is take some four by green plate and we could put a row like that there and we could blend it in just like we've done here. So it's essentially the exact same thing that we've done, but we actually raised it up. Oh no, we'd have to use two plates, sorry. So we'd have to go two plates here. And then once we do that, we can blend it in just like that there. So it's essentially the exact same thing but the train track would be one taller. And the nice thing about that layout is that when you line up these plates now, you can see that that is as tall as the brick because we're at three plates there and it's gonna blend in with the bricks. So you're not gonna be able to see the bricks when it's up against the mills plates. So we might go with that. I might switch to the L gauge standard, but then blend in the side with green plates. Okay, that's the end of my train track ramble. I know if you don't have it on hand, it's probably a little bit confusing, but essentially we're just dealing with different heights. This being the lowest one, this being the medium one, and this one being the highest one. Now, if I wanted to go between a mid range between this one and this one, then I'd have to layer the whole base plate with bricks, which I don't think I want to do, or I'd have to layer the whole base plate using two plates and then a uh, top plate. So uh, we'd use two plates as our bricks essentially, so it'd be two plates, and then there'd be a top plate on top of the whole thing, and then you'd go in the mid-range, which would be probably good too, but definitely the most part intensive and the most expensive to create, uh, just based on <laughs> what height we wanted to go with. You can see when you're dealing with ballast track and mills plates, it can get very part intensive. 
very quickly and it's crazy. I think I have enough parts to do this one or this one right now or this one. So that's why, I'm, or these three I should say, so that's why I'm showing you these three different options. But I think I'm gonna update it to this option here. So it's the L gauge standard and blent in with green. Because we have enough green plate, we just have to bring up all of our track one plate. There's definitely nothing wrong with the current setup other than the fact that you can see this, but I was planning on building a fence there. So it actually is a good height. You know, like this is a good height because look, it blends in with the road beautifully. I realize our sidewalk comes down a plate, but I realize that you can actually build up this sidewalk one more plate and the train should have clearance. I just don't want to make it too tall. Otherwise the bottom of the train is going to rub against the sidewalk and that can't happen either, right? But I think I can build it up one more plate so this is even. But what I like about our current track is the fact that it's the same height as the road so there's literally like no train crossings. There's no height difference, which is super cool. So I've really got to think about that. I might just stay with our original plan. You know, like even though it's not the L gauge standard, I might stay with the original plan. The problem is, is with this layout, you can't tack down your corners. Your corners are just sitting there loose. And because they're sitting there loose, they're technically a little bit taller, but not enough to make a difference for the train. But they're sitting here loose because you can't tack them down. And if you do tack them down, it's gonna bring them up a plate and then it's gonna be higher than the straights. So <laughs> do I stick with the standard and live with my corners not being tacked down, but have it the same height as the road? Or do I bring it one plate higher, tack down the corners and cover up this brick here that would be covered up anyway with a stone wall? I don't know, you know what I mean? It takes a long time to do it and a lot of parts to do it. A lot to think about here with the Lego City, especially with cutting base plates, creating rock walls, changing all the train track. It takes a lot of time. One thing I will say is we're gonna add some switches back here so we can get some train parking for sure. I've gotta give this some thought though. This is crazy. So I came into this video and I was like, I'm gonna move all of the modular buildings, which we pretty much did. Essentially all the modular buildings have a new home, except for like the ones on Pop Culture Street and the ones around Town Hall. I think I like this layout a little bit better. But then I was like, you know what? I'm also gonna start building some cliff edges. And then I realized, oh, I'm out of half base plates. Am I really gonna start cutting base plates in half? Should I do that? Is there a cheap way to do it? I don't know. And also up top there, are we gonna shift the modular buildings forward six studs? And are we gonna be able to build some facades and stuff behind the modular buildings on those six studs? And then we're only gonna build a 10 stud walkway and maybe extend it out on top of those MERPs going up the wall or something like that? Are we gonna do that? So now I've really got to think about it because obviously all of this stuff is going to take time. I think I'm pretty happy with the train track though. After editing this video, I was like, hmm, I think I'm going to stick with the way the train track is now because that height difference between the road or like the no height difference is the way to go, I think. It's just a dilemma here. I am, I am like conflicted. I don't know what to do. Uh, I know eventually we're going to start moving forward we're gonna start adding details. We're gonna start adding our wall covering. We're gonna start adding the facades in the background behind these buildings. And I know we're gonna start getting the train track layout perfect and building that wall that's gonna blend in the mills plates and stuff like that. And I know eventually it's gonna look rock star, but just really trying to think it through before I just dive in head first and spend all this time and energy doing something and then figure out that I should have done it differently. That's the key, <laughs> not having to redo it 50 times. Thinking it through. So that's sort of what I've been doing, you know, between the last update and throughout this, you know, through this table creation and everything, as we rebuild the city, I really want to think it through before I start doing this stuff because I don't want to redo it all. And like, I'm ready to just dive in and start doing it. Like I've got the parts ready to go but I don't know if I want to start chopping up base plates and stuff. Oh, it's just a confliction. I don't know. I want to start like right now. I want to start now, oh, but I just don't know what to do. I'm a little bit confused right now. I won't lie to you. I'm a confused Lego city builder right now. I am confused. I don't know what to do. It's crazy. Let me know what you think by commenting below. Remember to like, subscribe and stay tuned for some more great stuff. I'm going to sleep on it yet again. And I guess I'm going to move on to some other projects uh, like reviewing the land speeder and I've got some other videos cooked up in my brain here as well. But yeah, eventually this Lego city is going to look primo and I cannot wait for that, uh, for that day to tell you the truth. I can't wait to get started. 
just going to really develop a plan here. Everybody, thank you so much. Stay tuned. Fairball.